The next feature that I wanted to demo very quick here is the smoke simulator. The smoke simulator works very well in Blender for getting some pretty good smoke effects in relatively short time. We can work with it by simply adding in first a domain object, so I'll just add in a cube. Then I'll follow that up by adding in an icosphere and scaling that down. This is going to be, then be my flow object to actually input the smoke. So I can go right over to the physics buttons here. I'll first set this one to smoke and flow, which will then automatically create a particle system for that. I can then select my cube and this will be my smoke domain. And now if I hit Alt A, it'll immediately uh, play back and start generating my smoke. Now right now you'll notice that it is solid black. So if we simply hit Shift A, add in a lamp and we'll just do a sun lamp, then that will immediately render the smoke with some very basic shading so that we can see how things are looking. If you just play back your start over your animation by hitting shift left arrow, you can immediately start over the simulation. So if you've adjusted any settings, then you can just set, start it over. Uh, we could go ahead and adjust a few things. So like if we wanted faster smoke, uh, we can set the particles to set the initial velocity of the smoke and then go over to our particles themselves and maybe set the lifetime to be five such that they actually start flowing out and give us a little bit more uh, flowing smoke. We could set the end time of these particles to be say 25 such that it will stop emitting particles at that point and then just let the smoke rise. Maybe we'll give these this lifetime or we can give it a few more particles. So maybe we'll give it say 5,000 particles, Ooh, not 50,000, 5,000 just to get a lot more smoke in there. So then you can see we're getting a lot more very quickly. Uh, we can go over and there's a lot of other things we can do. Maybe we'll take this lifetime down to two so that we get a little bit more of a burst of smoke. We could set this, this smoke, if we really wanted a good burst, we could increase the normal velocity on it to say 10 so that the particles fly out a lot faster and give us much more of a very quick explosion. So if we even set the end time then to one, all 4,000 particles will just burst out. Now in this case, that doesn't work very well because it doesn't give us enough time to have the smoke in there. So setting the emitter geometry back down to one or something like that is probably a little better. And maybe that's, you know, maybe we can set that to two. There we go, it gets a little more. So you can just continue to adjust this and get some, you know, get the smoke how you want it. On the smoke domain, maybe we could go in we could set our density up to maybe one, which will result in much faster rising smoke so like this. Uh, you could set your temperature difference, the vorticity, you can go ahead and increase up to four to get a little bit more turbulence in the actual smoke. You can increase the resolutions of the smoke here. Uh, you can have high resolution smoke, which will take higher to, longer to calculate, but you'll have much smaller pieces of smoke to then get more detail in there. We've also got a smoke cache so that you can bake it all out. Um, you know, so if you want to bake your complete simulation to disk and render that on another machine or just to have it stored so that you don't have to constantly be reading it from memory, uh, this does just require that you have your file saved uh, or else you cannot use the cache. So that's the smoke simulation uh, just very quickly. You know, it's uh, pretty, pretty simple, but you can really get some pretty good effects with it if you spend the time. Maybe we'll even set this to set that back to 25, get a little bit more variety in there and there we go so we can get all kinds of cool effects with our smoke uh, you can definitely combine these smokes you can add in uh, force fields and things like that so force fields right in here to then affect the particles that are then generating the smoke you can use this to create all kinds of things like uh, if you want to create tornadoes or shock waves or whatever then those work very very well and you can layer the smoke flows so Currently, in the existing system, you can only use one domain, uh, but the, the next version of the smoke simula simulator will have a lot of additional features such as adaptive domains, movable domains, um, fire simulation, uh, a lot of other additional features that are really going to improve the system. So you can only have one domain currently, but you can have as many flows as you would like. And so you can just combine those and they'll work very nicely together to give us a lot of different smoke. You know, each one of these can have unique particle systems doing completely different things. Uh, so one, you know, could be a ring, one could be, you name it. So even if we wanted to add in a very quick ring here, just add in a cylinder, scale it down, and then add in our smoke and our flow. Make sure this is not capped, which it currently is. 
and then on these particles we'll give them an initial velocity we'll set this to say three set the end to five and then you know that can just give us a very big ring of smoke now this is a pretty confined area uh, we could improve this maybe scale up the domain just a little bit give us a little bit more room now of course with the higher dom or larger domain you're going to need to use higher resolution smoke but i think you get the point there's a lot of different things that you can do to then get the effect that you want